I can bet that once you really start rocking and selling your demo singing services online, your happy client rate will be really high because you're awesome and they chose you for a reason. But unfortunately, that percentage won't be 100 even if you are Beyonce good. So what do we do? There's really three basic choices when a project starts to go south. You can work it out, you can stand your ground, or you can take the L. Every situation is different, but one thing's for sure, the best way to deal with problems is to prevent them. All the ways to do that will reveal themselves through trial and painful error. Side note, mindset check. When these tough moments do occur, try to look at it as new data. Calm your emotions and make note of how the situation can be prevented next time. It can be heartbreaking because making music is such a vulnerable thing. We have to open our hearts to give the performance every song baby deserves. So when a client turns around and tells us our baby is ugly, it hurts. <laughs> so in the realm of choice one, we want to work it out, get the song to the finish line with a happy client, but we don't want to be taken advantage of, which is why you should do your best to ask questions about the performance they want from you ahead of time so you truly can deliver what they want on the first try. But also have a clear revision policy. It's up to you what that will look like. Mine personally is one free round of revisions, which is a handful of small fixes, but not a re-recording. So when you send the MP3 over to your client and they reply that it's not quite there, it's time to talk revisions. Try to keep the tone of your message really positive. It's never comfortable when someone has to tell you that you didn't nail it. So try not to be offended. If they aren't being clear on what they want, ask them nicely to send you a numbered list of the quick fixes they'd like you to do. You might need to remind them what your revision policy includes. Keeping this attitude of what our possibilities are is a lot better than immediately telling them what they can't have. So let's hope they read between the lines, be reasonable, be calm, and if you need to take a pause and not respond right away, that's a really great idea. However, in rare cases, some clients will argue your policy and ask for more than you've agreed to, such as re-recording the whole thing. So option two is to stand your ground. Again, leading with what you are able to do shows that you're trying to be reasonable, but you may have to also explain what you do not do and offer alternatives. So when people ask you for more than what you offer, give it a price tag. Extensive revisions may cost like $100 less than the original price of the project, or even charging the full rate again if they want a full re-record. I've had clients pay the full rate again a handful of times. It's really rare, but some people are willing to do it if you're kind and it's obvious that they are asking for something that's totally different from the direction they told you in the first place. If you end up at a standstill with the client, it may be time to message the admin of the platform you're using for advice and mediation. Option three is gonna be cutting your losses and walking away. You are never trapped in a nightmare job with a nightmare client. You can always offer a refund and make them go away if it's better for your mental health. I have presented two options in the past. I've told clients they can either pay the additional fee for the extended revision, or I can offer them a 50% refund. And if they choose the 50% refund, then you've come to an agreement. But I do wanna tell you about an interesting case that came up once and it turned into an actual win for me. I was hired to write a song and record it. I really, really thought I had written a smash hit. I loved how it came out, but unfortunately, the client didn't like it. <laughs> so I didn't even want to deal with it and rewrite it. I probably was never going to accept another gig with him again anyway. So what I did was I offered him a full refund in exchange for 100% rights to what I wrote. Technically, a producer has a legal claim to your songwriting if you wrote it to their track because it's like they inspired the songwriting with their chord progression. Well, he agreed, I refunded him, and I went and I uploaded that acapella to vocal.com. And funny enough, I have now made more money selling acapella licenses for it than the fee I originally charged him. There are endless scenarios that can come up with demo singing and custom songwriting clients. If you've run into a rocky situation, tell us about it in the comments and maybe we can help you through it. Maybe it can help someone else here. There's free resources for you at singersuccesspath.com. That's linked below in the description. If you're a singer looking for ways to monetize your voice, go grab a copy of the master list of 35 ways singers are making money without performing live and join our free monthly mastermind Zoom call. You can sign up for that that on the website as well. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos on building a sustainable singing career. Jump.